So welcome back to our last thermo short before our first midterm exam. The focus of this first midterm will be closed system processes. So I have here a list of things, what you should do if you feel lost on a midterm problem. So you want to know how to draw PV and TV diagrams. You want to make a state table. Then if you want, you can make a process table so you can track heat transfer and work. Look on your state table for a place where you have two independent intensive properties and fix that state. Now you may know something about the process as you move to the next state. For example, you may have a pressure volume relationship that looks something like this. If so, maybe you can use that to get some information about your next step. Then you can use the first law, find work, find your delta specific internal energy and multiply that by the mass and then use the first law to find the heat transfer. Ultimately, you would repeat processes four, five, and six until you've completed the problem. So how do I use process info? First, we gotta figure out if our process is open or closed. This is a pretty straightforward thing to do on our first midterm because all our processes are closed. That means we can use this version of the first law. We'll make some assumptions and get to a point that says on the left side, the change in internal energy is equal to Q minus W. Note that we don't always have to make these assumptions and you could be presented with a question where you can't neglect something like kinetic or potential energy. Then you'll want to use the process information to get pressure as a function of volume and then you'll find the work as the integral of PDV. Now we've got to say, what kind of fluid do we have? If it's a subcooled liquid, we can use that the change in specific internal energy is CV times delta T, or we can approximate the properties of the subcooled liquid as the property of the saturated liquid at the same temperature. If it's a two-phase mixture, we can find X. If it's a superheated vapor, we can interpol interpolate on table A4. If it's an ideal gas, we can use the ideal gas law, or we can use delta U is equal to CV times delta T, or we can use table A22. Finally, we'll solve for Q using the first law. This is generally how we'll approach any first law problem on this first exam. At the end of the problem, we'll still wanna see, does it make sense? Right, so are my signs correct for work and heat? Do my units work out for all of these problems? So we can't always prove that we're right, but you can sometimes show that you're wrong and that's a valuable tool on a test. We're gonna go through a first law example here using ideal gases. Here, we're told something about this process as we move from state one to state two and we're given enough information to solve the problem. So I'll go through this pretty quickly here, both from constant specific heat and from variable specific heat perspectives. So again, we're gonna start with the closed version of the first law. We'll make some assumptions and we get that the change in the internal energy is equal to Q minus W. And it's great to have this equation, but we don't know any of this information. So first we'll find work. I know that work is the integral of PDV and I'm told that PV to the 1.5 is constant in this case. So now I wanna write out that P as a function of V is C times V to the negative 1.5. Then I'll do my integration and I'll eventually find that the work is equal to P2 V2 minus P1 V1 divided by 0.5. So if I'm trying to find the work, the only thing that I need to find out here is my volume at state two. So here I make use of the fact that P1 V1 to the 1.5 is constant. So I can do this and find C, or I can just equate these two terms together. I opt to do the latter, and I find that the volume at state two is 0.3 cubic feet. So now I know everything in my work equation and I get that the work is positive. So I know that heat in is positive and work in is negative. So this must be work out 
So the system is doing work on the surroundings. Now I found the work and I want to find the change in the internal energy. I have two options for doing this. And the first one is to assume that the specific heats are constant. Now, because this is an ideal gas, I have to remember which specific heat to use. So here, delta U is equal to CV times delta T. I put this into my equation and I see that I don't know either of my temperatures. But I can use the ideal gas law. So at state 1, I know that P1 times V1 is equal to MRT1. I can isolate for the temperature at state 1. And in this case, I find that it's 866 degrees Rankin. Remember that this is not a temperature difference, which means we need to use absolute temperatures, which is why this is in Rankin and not Fahrenheit. As I move from state 1 to state 2, I could do the same thing that I did for state 1, but I find it goes a little faster if I notice that both the mass and the gas are constant. So it's the same specific gas constant, at both states and it's the same mass which means that p1v1 over t1 is equal to p2v2 over t2. I'm trying to find the temperature at state 2 so I can manipulate this relationship and find the temperature at this state. So now I know everything here and I can find that the change in the internal energy is negative 517 foot pounds. I can use this in my first law to find the heat transfer from state 1 to state 2. Again, I know everything except the quantity that I'm looking for. So here, I find that Q from 1 to 2 is 517 foot-pounds. Heat in here is positive, so heat must be added to the system. When I decided how to find delta U, I made an assumption. I thought that I could do the problem with constant specific heat analysis. But on an exam, we'll tell you whether or not you should do that or assume that it's variable specific heat. So if it's variable specific heat, because our working fluid here is air, we'll use table A22. And I'll show you how to do that now. So we still have to find these two temperatures. But once we find the temperatures, we can fix the states if it's an ideal gas. So state 1 has a temperature of 866. So I can interpolate between these two rows and I can find the specific internal energy associated with state 1. I put that into my table. I can do the same thing at state 2. Again, identifying the rows that I have to interpolate between. Do the interpolation and I find a specific internal energy for state 2. Now, again, I have everything I need to solve for the heat transfer from state 1 to state 2. I put some stuff into my calculator, but here I recognize that the table is telling me delta U, the change in the specific internal energy, times the mass in BTU. But my work was in foot-pounds. So in this case, I choose to change my first term into foot-pounds using this conversion factor. Now, I put all this stuff into my calculator, and I get a value for the heat transfer. Here, you notice the value is very similar to when we used constant specific heat, and it's also positive. So again, heat in is positive. So hopefully this gives you a nice overview of how to do a first law problem if you're dealing with a working fluid that's an ideal gas like air. We can decide whether or not to use constant or variable specific heat. But on a midterm, we'll probably ask you to use one of these two methods. So you need to know how to do both. Thank you, and I'll see you again next time on Thermal Shorts.